So let's see if I can, there we go. All right, well, I'm gonna start us off. And when I think about um, the most important thing uh, that I dealt with when I switched to the library, I, I had been a classroom teacher for 17 years and then I switched to a different school to another elementary school and I didn't know anyone there. So I needed to get to know the people. And I do recommend that if you're, especially if you're changing to a new school, but, but even if you're in your same school, you might not know all the kids um, as well as you'd like to. So um, a couple of recommendations I have for getting to know your students are, um, well, one, you could do an interest inventory, and I recommend that anyway, just because that can help you shape your purchasing and your um, your activity planning. Um, but just some simple things that I did right away to get to know kids' names. Um, I used, I had them make their own name tags on um, on index cards and folded them, you know, like a tent so they'd stand up on their table. And my classes were back to back to back. So I had enough time to maybe run around the room and uh, put those in places for, for where the kids could sit each week. And then I could see their name and associate it with their face. Um, another thing is that um, our library cards had the kids' pictures on them. They came from Life Touch, And so I had the year before, the library cards from the year before. So I would study them over the, uh, that day's, for that day's classes. I would study them in the morning and just kind of look um, to remember. And then I also used seating charts just to keep me on, on track and to be able to know. I think it helps when you know somebody's name. And, and that was such a big concern to me when I started because I had 500 kids. I was trying to learn everybody's name. So um, those are some of my tips for getting to know the kids. And then um, you don't want to leave your teachers and staff out. Those relationships with them are so important. Um, you're, you're a team member with your, with your teachers and with your support staff too. Um, and they, you're there also to help them with their information needs and to work with them in teaching the stu your students. And so um, just getting to know your um, colleagues and to build that relationship with them and that trust and, and to know one another, I think is really important. And a big thing that I suggest um, is to have lunch with your colleagues if you can, if you have a faculty room where you can go and eat your lunch um, and visit with them, you'll get to know one another and you'll be able to hear conversations between grade level teams maybe that are talking about what they're teaching in their classes or content area teachers. And it's a nice um, casual way to maybe be able to bring up collaboration opportunities or to be able to offer um, ways that you can help support them. Um, if you can't do that because you have your library open at lunch or you really need your alone time, which I can relate to, <laughs> um, you know, maybe an occasional recess time or coffee break or just wherever you can fit in that time to casually um, get to know your staff, I think is beneficial. Another thing that I think is important with your relationships is to build relationships with other librarians. So I recommend if in your district, if there's a group, if your librarians meet as a group or there's an opportunity for you to meet with them, um, I recommend that you do that. And if not, if that's difficult for you, there's lots of online opportunities like this group that we're in. Um, but it's, it, I think it's one thing that was really important to me was to have colleagues that I could go to and ask questions and learn from. I didn't have to do everything the same way that they did, um, but I could, have someone to go to with my, with my questions or with my um, needs. And I was lucky 
in my school district that there were a lot of librarians who were who welcomed me and we had monthly meetings and then we made um, some of us were in a study group together and um, just would share ideas and learn from one another. Uh, then you don't feel alone too. Um, and the last thing I would say is just don't try to do it all at once. Listen to, we're all going to have a lot of things to say right now. And, um, you know, think about what works for you, but you want to move forward with what you're doing in your library. But I really think if you put those relationships first, everything else that you need is going to come into play. You're going to be making it a priority that you're you're there to serve your school community and have fun with it. Um, so, okay, well, on to the next person, which is Julie. Hi, I'm Julie Olson. I am the owner of the TPT store called That Library Girl, and I'm also one of the admin of our Facebook group, along with Laura Trapp. My part of the discussion today is don't be afraid to ask questions. We're going to start with teaching expectations. In a perfect world, you would walk into your library and there would be a district curriculum binder or a website that you could go to and it would all be laid out for you. But that is probably not what's going to happen. Instead, you're going to need to start with your national or your state standards and find out what is expected of you? Are you expected to teach just library media and research skills? Or will you also be expected to teach reading strategies? You may be expected as the librarian to dip into keyboarding or other computer science skills. You may be asked to teach STEM skills. You may even be in charge of a club like Robotics Club or Forensics or a project like Odyssey of the Mind. As much as you can find out at the beginning of the year, you'll be able to kind of make a curriculum map and plug in things so that not as absolutes, but as guidelines, you'll be able to find your stepping stone path to get through this very first year. Also find out what kind of classroom support teachers are going to expect from you throughout the year. Um, as a librarian, many times I was asked to come in at certain times of the year before research was going to begin. Maybe I would pop in for a note-taking lesson, or maybe when the kids came to the library, I would teach about MLA formatting or PowerPoint skills before the research unit was going on in the classroom. So, if you can find out Oh, in October, they're going to be doing biographies. You can kind of plan your library classroom instruction around what's going on in the classroom and do some double dipping. The second thing we're going to talk about are the books. You may want a little investigation going on about what happened then before you decide what's going to happen now. Every librarian is different and every librarian has different rules, things that they can put up with and things that they can't. But find out from your older students, how many books were they allowed to check out at different grade levels? How long were they allowed to keep them? Were they allowed renewals? Could they reserve books? And remember, this can change. My advice to you would be to start out slow, and then as you get to know your children, give them more and more responsibility, just like we do our kids at home. Find out what else you check out in your library. You may be able to check out ebooks and audiobooks. Your district may even subscribe to a um, system like Sora. You may actually check out physical audiobooks called Playaways. You may have DVDs, kits, even games. There are a lot of things that can be checked out, but it's good to know what you've got and also just to jot down your own policies of how this is going to work. And that brings me to my next point. Look around to see if you can find a district library binder or website. There may already be things in place that you can follow and adapt for your own school situation. Hopefully there's a selection policy and a collection development guideline list, things that have been in place, things that the other librarians follow or followed before you that you can adapt and you can follow to build upon. 
Um, Lee is going to talk about book challenges in just a minute, but that is something that you need to be able to put your hands on at a moment's notice, um, especially to diffuse someone that might have an upset bone to pick with you. All right. You're also going to need to find out very quickly about your budget, about fundraiser do's and don'ts. There may be a book fair already scheduled that you're going to want to jump in on and contact the rep and find out details like dates and expectations on the book fair company's end. And this binder website magical thing that I'm hoping you'll find may have guidelines for weeding. All of these things you can find online to set up, but hopefully there are some things in place that you can just walk into. Number four is technology. I want you to find out pretty quickly about your library automation software. One of the very first tasks that you need to do is to set up your yearly calendar within your circulation system. Find out the name of your company. Find out the brand of software that you use. Find out if there's some training available. Um, you may not be able to get hands-on training, someone coming from the company to train you, but there may be online training for free or for a small price that you can talk to your admin about getting yourself up to speed with how the library is run. More than likely, you're going to be paying an annual support port fee of some kind, and that means you will have a tech line that you can call during certain hours of the day, and if you're not um, able to speak to someone right then, they will call you back at an appointment time. And so you can sit down at your computer with them, and they can walk you through whatever kind of setup you're trying to work on or troubleshoot problems with you. Another thing that you're going to want to know about are the logins and passwords for your school. Um, if you're at an elementary school, you may use a system like Clever. It's important for you to know about it, even if you're not in charge of it, because when the kids come to the library, they're going to be using those systems, and you'll need to know how to use them as well. It may be a situation where students, especially new students, may come to you if they're having a problem with their login. Maybe they've forgotten their password or the password they used last year is not working for some reason. Maybe it's a brand new student who needs a login and a password. And there may be certain parameters in your district to set up those passwords in a certain way. Just ask some questions. Find out if you're the person in charge, and if so, what are you supposed to do? Also find out about other equipment responsibilities outside the library. Often librarians are in charge of things like the copier or the laminator, and you may need some training and maybe a manual or just some um, information about what you're in charge of and what you're supposed to do. Also, make friends. Make friends with your custodians, your office, your bookkeeper, the tech guys who work from the district office. All of those people are going to answer a lot of your questions that first year. Be kind, find out their favorite snacks, and be sure to thank them profusely whenever they pull you out of the fire. Number five, a lot of times librarians end up being the communication contact of the school. That means you may be helping with the website, you may be in charge of um, coming up with a weekly or monthly newsletter, or you may take um, all of the contributions from different grade levels and compile that into a newsletter. You may be in charge of social media pages like Facebook. You may even be in charge of some kind of a digital TV system within your school with scrolling announcements. All of these things are just things you need to ask about, things you need to find out about. I would not offer to do these things the first year unless you feel very, very confident about the task, but be a good listener, keep your ears open, find out what is expected of you, and then don't be afraid to ask questions to know exactly what you're supposed to do. All right. Thank you for your attention. We'll move on to number three. So um, I am Lee Colazzo, and I am uh, from Mrs. Reader Pants Library Lessons. 
I almost wasn't here today. We've had a, I live in Mexico and we've had a big internet strike and we've been with, with and without internet, um, mostly without for nine days. So roll with it. If that happens to you in your school, the Wi-Fi will go down. Um, the power will go out. I've had that a few times, but uh, hang in there. Uh, it, it will get better. Just be unflappable. But that's actually not what I'm talking about today. Um, I have been the librarian in five schools, uh, sorry, four schools. Uh, one, I was a teacher. I taught seventh grade ELA. And then I went down to elementary for library. And then I went up to middle school and that was all in Texas. And then I had a nice little adventure. I went to China to be a librarian um, at two, I was in two different schools in China. One was in Suzhou and one was in Shanghai. So if you are international, um, know that like, you have your own set of challenges. There's a lot of different things, but one thing that is consistent across all of those schools for me was sometimes parents have a concern about books in the library. And for me, it was mostly parents, but it can also be teachers, it can be administrators, it can even be students. I have never had a student um, that formally challenged a book, but I have had um, parents for, for me is, is mostly the case. But sometimes teachers will come in with an informal challenge. So the difference between a formal challenge and an informal challenge is a formal challenge is when they fill out paperwork and it goes to a higher level than you in the district. An informal challenge is just when someone comes into the library and they're telling you about something in the book, they don't wanna take it any farther than just telling you. And that thankfully is the majority of the challenges that you're gonna face. So for an informal challenge, um, I had a situation in my library in Texas in middle school. One more, it was really busy in the mornings and I had at least hundred students in the library and there was a lot going on and I was by myself. <laughs> and turned around, parents standing there, and she's got her book with all the sticky notes in the things flagging all the objectionable content in this book. Um, she was not happy, and she kind of started to raise her voice a little bit, and I had all those kids in the library. This was before school. I don't even know how she got in the building. Like, I don't know if this is a dangerous person, so like, what am I going to do? So, the really important thing with any challenge that is brought up is that you need to keep your mouth shut as much as possible and just listen. If they do start to get in, uh, this is very rare, but if they start like using bad language and things like that, you wanna call for security, of course, if, they're, if they need to be escorted out. But most of the time that's not gonna happen and that didn't even happen with this lady. My biggest recommendation for you is to know your policy. Julie meant the binder. Look for that. It may be in the principal's office. It could be in your library office. If it's, you can't find it anywhere, it's probably look for your school district school board policies online. Go and do a search for selection or collection development policies. You've got to find that because thankfully that morning when that parent came in and she was all upset, I mean, the, the library was getting quiet. The kids were like, whoa, what's going to happen? Um, I had stapled copies this is the policy and these are this is the paperwork you fill out if you would like to formally challenge this and then that's all i needed to say let her talk about whatever do not agree do not disagree just give them the paperwork and just if you say anything it's just to explain the policy and how it works but in order to do that you need to know your policy you need to know where it is you don't want to be flustering around while that parent's standing there cuz she's just going to get mad She's, you're going to look very unprofessional. So I know that you're really, really busy in the beginning of the year, but you've got to take time to find those policies, make copies, staple them together, put it right where you can get it quickly. Because when that person's in there and you're flustered and it's the first time this has happened and you've got kids everywhere and you're worried about maybe a security issue, you've got that policy right there. You are in charge. You know what's going on. So please, please, this is something that happens. This happened less to a lesser extent in China. It was more in Texas that I had this, but um, just have it available and know, know, know your policies. If you don't know them, ask. And then the last thing is make sure your administrators 
also know those policies. Make time at the beginning of the year to meet with your administrators and go over the policies, ask questions, talk about them, because chances are really good that your administrators don't know them. And they could cause you, like if they go and they agree with the parent where they say, I can't believe we'd have a book like that in the library, um, the parent like does not, that, there should not be any validation of the concern on the, on the administration's behalf. It, they should also be very neutral. This is the policy. This is explaining it. It should not be any opinions given on the book. So book challenges. And I have, if you don't have policies, I have a freebie for policies coming up in a little while. So. All right, thank you, V. That's so important. Next, we have Renee talking to us about stretching across grade levels. Renee. Hi, everybody. My name's Renee Link. Um, I live in Pennsylvania and I've been a teacher for almost 16 years now. Uh, I was a classroom teacher, I was a special ed teacher, and once I finally found that I could become a librarian, I jumped on that as soon as possible. So for me, one of the things that was very difficult in going from a classroom and special education teacher perspective, it was working with all the grade levels. Um, it was a challenge at first because obviously you're not going to treat fifth and sixth graders as you would treat kindergarten and first graders. And as you go through your year, it gets a lot better. You, you are able to uh, notice more of what works for what grade levels. And that's, that can be a challenge in itself, but it also is something that you can work on throughout the year. It's not something that you have to get right away. Um, the classroom management skills that you have as a classroom teacher, that can also help you. Um, a lot of things that you did in the classroom can be used in the library. Um, there, I've tried many different things from class dojo to um, earning stickers. It was all kinds of experience, but as a librarian, I worked for six years with uh, within four different buildings. So I had over a thousand kids and um, knowing what they need as far as IEP concerns um, to differentiating between um, grade levels. I've used lessons for certain grade levels that worked for a different grade level too. So it's, it's something that you have to play around with and get to know. And the more you do it, um, the more you become aware of what third graders need as opposed to fourth graders. And curriculum helps, a curriculum map and scope and sequence. And I've been doing a lot of work this summer on trying to get that all organized for myself. And I'm entering my eighth year as a librarian. So I am now in one building at a different district, which helps a lot. I only, I only have 400 and some kids instead of over a thousand. And I don't have to travel, which is nice, just to one place. Um, it's, it's just learn as you go. And it's, and you have to give yourself a lot of grace and understanding to know that when you have fifth graders coming in and then your next scheduled class is a kindergarten class, possibly, um, you kind of have to change your mindset and get yourself ready to, um, accept that class coming in as opposed to treating them uh, similar to other grade levels that are higher than kindergarten. And kindergarten is, <laughs> is a very challenging grade level to, to have, especially I've had mine at the end of the day. So it's my schedule is kind of simplified for me at this point where I have fifth grade first and then it goes all the way up to kindergarten and it's nice that way but it's also a challenge um and being a librarian is the best i mean even working with all the kids you know you get to see all of them every week hopefully um 
in my previous job at four buildings, I got to see them every two weeks for 30 minutes. Now I get to see them every week for 50 minutes. And it really helps me make more connections and establish those relationships like Laura was talking about with the kids and with the teachers. And it's, it's the sweet spot of the school and it's, it's the best. So I hope that helps. That's, that was great, Renee. You made so many good points. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next, we have Colleen. And Colleen is um, a newer librarian, and she has some great tips about our library spaces. Yeah, thank you. So um, I'm Colleen. I live uh, in Canada. I'm just north of Toronto. And actually, I'm going into my second year as a librarian. So I realize I don't have as much, much experience as my colleagues here about um, in terms of uh, lived experience in the library, but I'm just as passionate about helping new librarians. Some context for you about why I'm so passionate is um, at my school, it's, I am a full-time librarian with a flexible schedule. I don't cover any classes or anything. Um, it's a kindergarten to grade eight school with eight, over 800 students, about 35 classrooms. And so um, I'm supposed to be partnering with uh, teachers to do things with book exchange obviously included in that um, so it's a really busy place uh, but when I went to jump in last year I was given nothing and so I was so excited to dive in as I'm sure many of you are in that space right now um, this opportunity the library is all of my colleagues here have said is an amazing place it's the central place of the school it's so important um, but I I knew what I wanted to do, but I didn't know how to do it. And so it was overwhelming and I don't want that for you guys. So that's why I'm here. So I hope that you will take some of my ideas and be able to um, use them in your library this year. Um, for me, my goal was making the library experience easy and fun for students and staff. And a huge aspect of that is your space. Uh, typically, at not every library, I can't speak for every library, I know some people have more space than others, but um, my library is right in the middle of the school. It's quite a large space. Um, I've seen bigger ones, I've seen smaller ones. So you kind of, uh, you'll use what you have, but um, it's really important to utilize it well. So my overall goal was to create a more inviting and supportive space for students and teachers. And I had worked at the school before becoming a librarian and I had, seen how it wasn't set up that way. Um, so that's why I was able to go in with that goal. So um, my first goal was um, particularly for the younger students. I come from a, a kindergarten background. I was a kindergarten teacher before jumping into li the library. And I wanted it to be inviting for them because they are going to be coming to the library for 10 years. We've got junior kindergarten and senior kindergarten here in Canada. And so their elementary experience is 10 years long and so I wanted it to be fun for them and so um, Laura I'm going to ask you to put my first slide up there um, I'm going to show you some before and afters um, and so this was the easy section which I call the everyone section because I think picture books are for everyone uh, they're not just for the easy young kids um, and so this was it before and there was no it was it wasn't I felt when I brought my kindergarten kids, they just kind of walked by and just picked a book. And it was just like, eh, sure, I'll take this book, whatever. Um, and it wasn't fun. And so my, my focus in life is on early literature and creating that love of reading. And it's so important. I realize that's not everyone's priority. Some of you will be in middle school or high school libraries, um, but I'm just giving you my experience and I'll tell you how it can relate to you in a minute. So hang tight there. <laughs> Um, so I moved books around and shelves around to create a space where students can come to listen to a story once a week along with their book exchange. Um, so Laura, if you can show my after picture, um, you can see that the change is quite dramatic here. We've got open space now. Uh, students can see the area when they walk in and they're excited to enter it and, and sit down. This picture is actually from right after when I did it in September. Uh, it has changed slightly since then. I'm going to get a carpet this coming year so that there's a dedicated spot for where they actually sit. Um, anyways, 
so you can see that there's a difference and it's open, it's organized and things like that. My advice for you, whether this is relevant to you or not, um, is to think about what you're passionate about. I took what I was passionate about early reading and making sure there was a time for these young kindergarten to grade two students to hear a book read by a different teacher than their own teacher. Um, Cause I think that's so important. And that was my focus. So I made that a priority in my library. Yours might be a makerspace. It might be graphic novels. It might be the nonfiction section. Whatever you're passionate about, make sure there's a space for it and that the students can access it. Make sure there's signage. Make sure there's, you know, it's really clear where things are. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of my first, um, first uh, suggestion for you all. Um, my second goal that as I went into my first year was to make it more user friendly. So it kind of goes along with um, it's kind of the second step to reorganizing where I put things. Um, but I wanted to label things with pictures and words, particularly in this uh, early literature section, but I did put it in other places. So um, if we can show up my next picture, um, you can see that in the easy section, they have these buckets, which are great. And I you will see this is what I think buckets are the best thing in the world. But for kindergarten kids, they can't read those words. They don't know um, how to read Berenstein Bears. They don't know how to read Robert Munch and they don't know what that means. And so what I did was I took time to create labels, not only with those words, because words are still important, um, but with pictures as well. So they could reference it and it would it reached them. And so if you uh, show the next picture, this is my last slide here. Um, oh, it's really hard to see, sorry. Um, you can see that I've now created a separate space with buckets on full shelves, not just kind of in a smaller shelf, um, where the, it's standing up and the covers are out. So they can see the covers and they can be excited about what they see. And, and it's easier to rifle through um, and pick a book that you like. Um, I did that not only in this easy section, I did it for graphic novels for all the popular books in my graphic novels. I did it for nonfiction, particularly my easy nonfiction because I have the um, who would win section, you know, all the animal books that kids love, um, snake books and things like that. And I also did it in my junior, or I guess it would be like grade two to six fiction um, level. So all the Diary of a Wimpy Kids, um, Goosebumps is in there, Dork Diaries, Geronimo Stilton, things like that are in their own buckets with them standing up with a beautiful label and picture. So kids knew where, where to find it when they came in. And if the bucket was empty, they knew there were no books left. Uh, yeah, definitely label everything. Um, and the, the huge benefit to this, honestly, the best benefit to this was not only that circulation went up, but that it was easy to put away. My goodness, I just had to throw things in a bucket nicely and I didn't have to sort through the books to figure out exactly where it had to go. And it saved me time. It saved my library helpers time in putting books away. So we got books out faster so they could circulate even better. Um, I did wanna share um, just a tip um, that I did not listen to because I am not me a year ago. Um, but, and I, uh, one of my colleagues said this, I can't remember who said it, but don't do it all at once. That was my mistake. Choose one project. Um, as a teacher librarian going into her second year, telling all my friends here that are going into their first year, um, don't do it all. I, I probably have about eight projects that are halfway through and <laughs> um, wish that I just did one project at a time and finished it fully and to help the library. So. Um, yeah, feel free to follow along. I've got lots of projects on for this coming year, um, and uh, hopefully I can take my own advice. I don't know if I will. Wonderful. Try. Good job, Colleen. Thank you, Colleen. Um, before we move on to our Q&A section, I did want to just remind you one more time that there's a handout in the group for you to download, and there's links uh, to the freebies that hopefully we'll get a chance to talk about um, in a minute. But 
I did see a question come through from Allison, and I know that Stacy's also in the same boat, and maybe some others of you. And she is asking if anyone has been became a librarian without first being a classroom teacher. So, right. any of you five in this group did do any of you did did any of you go right to just being a li to being a librarian without first being a teacher? No, okay. I, I mentored someone who did that. She was a volunteer in my library and she was wonderful. She was one of our parents and she had a degree in library science, but she did not have a teaching degree. And in our state, you have to have a teaching certificate as well. So she had to go through the praxis process and all of that. And she did fine. She, she enjoyed it. Um, it was just another leap that she had to take. Yeah, but that's another place that TPT comes in so beautifully because we are teachers and we we know the little steps to put in to help you succeed. Yeah, yeah, we have a lot. Maybe we'll um, I'll post a question in the group and see if other people who have some years under their belt to, um, have advice for you, because I see there's quite a number of people chiming in that they're moving from a different field into the library. Someone, Katie's from the public library, Laurel from the medical field, Jennifer's coming straight to the library. So um, we'll try to get some good advice for you in the group. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, we only have about 10 more minutes left. So we're, um, we're yes. uh, wanting to share some more information with you. I was going to see, there was one other question in the chat though about destiny um melinda says she has destiny and the previous librarian recommended using the online training has anyone tried it um i my i've used destiny i i haven't used i use their online help like you know where you could look up the answer the solution to what you wanted to do and that was helpful to me but Anyone else on the uh, panel have experience with online training from Destiny? Nope. Okay. Not Destiny, uh, but when I was in um, Wisconsin, I had to do something called Horizon. Have any of you heard of that? It was kind of an older system, um, and they had some online things that I could access, and they also had a helpline, so I could call and ask questions that way. So there might be something like that that you could get a hold of. Yeah, yeah, okay. Maybe even All a Saturday right. morning, if you take someone to breakfast, maybe you could pick their brain a little bit and you know, find out some information that you need. Yeah, that's a good idea. Someone in the chat says they've used their chat and email helpline and they were very responsive. So that's good news. Good, that's good, yeah. Okay, uh, Jean has been asked to uh, consider being on one, if not two committees during her first year. Um, one's easy and a good fit, the other an ELA committee with monthly meetings. Get teachers to pilot a new literacy program. Oh my goodness. I feel like this is too big of a lift the first year, but I'm working on how to communicate this appropriately. Yeah, that's... Anyone with a good way to politely decline <laughs> that request? Oh, can I can I just chime in on this one? Um, yes. Part of being a librarian that's really important is the um, ability to decline things, and that does sound like a big leap. I agree, and it doesn't matter though, like what other people think is what you feel comfortable with your experience doing. I'm not saying don't ever do anything that's a challenge, but I'm saying like, if you know that something is over your head, you need to go to your admin and tell them this is over my head and don't let them talk you into it because that's what they're going to do. They're going to try and talk you into it. I've been talked into so many things that yeah. I was not into, had no interest in. And those things take away from the things that I am into and the things that I am interested in. And those things are what I'm passionate about. Um, I was in education for 18 years and it's just you've got to got to got to learn to say no very early on or you're going to be burned out really quickly yeah. so you've got to I just think if you go in with them and like 
you say like politely decline, explain to them that you do not have the experience, you don't feel comfortable, whatever it is, um, but you definitely need to decline that if you're not comfortable doing it. Yeah, and you're just learning the ropes for your important role in a school too. Um, it's always yeah, good to say, if I plate. add this, what are we gonna take off? And then they yeah. start back pedaling really fast because they don't want you to take anything off. So yeah. I did That's have good... one one time that let me off duty. He oh. said, I really need you to do this. How about no duty? And I was like, ever? And we worked that out. I was really glad because it snows a lot in Wisconsin. The other thing too with um, saying, if let's say that you get roped into it and you do it, they talk you into it. Next time there's something, which is not going to take long. They're going to want, they're going to go, oh, well, she'll do that too. She'll do it again. She'll do it again. They're going to continue to pile until you say no. So like at some point you're going to have to say no, you're going to have to learn. And then you'll be like, I'm never doing that again. But you don't want that point to come when you are just completely at the end of your rope and burned out. You need to take care of yourself like long before that and say no to things that you're not interested in. Just it's, gosh, y'all, it's so important. You're going to get really burned out really quickly because they'll just keep piling it on. And forget that you're a teacher and you're running a library facility. And that's something that sometimes we have to remind them of. I used to have a poster in my library that had my duties as a teacher and my duties as a librarian and duties as, you know, on and on and on throughout the school year, the things that I did. And, and it was really nice because people would look at it and go, oh, yeah, you do a lot of things. So this is where advocacy That's comes in. That's a whole nother PD, isn't it, Laura? Advocacy. Yeah. All right. One more question before we go and uh, tell you about the freebies that we have. Uh, Sarah and Katie are in the same boat. First year librarian from the classroom without library training. Sarah's starting grad school for her master's in library science at the same time she's starting the position. So um, any advice for her? And Katie, the same way. She's partway through her degree and stepping into the school position unexpectedly. Um, I've mentored students here in Montana. They have um, often placed people into library positions without them finishing. They need to be in a program. but um, And that's hard. I, I, I think the biggest thing for them is connecting them to someone who is currently a librarian so they have someone to go because you're going to have a lot of questions <laughs> and um you know there's some things that are are were new to the students I was mentoring even like confidentiality about student um library records and that kind of thing that that they didn't know because they haven't had the training so um Make sure you have somewhere come into our group and ask questions. Hope maybe you have someone in person that you can talk to. Um, any other advice for, for Sarah and Katie? Right. So I, I did this. Um, I started with six hours of my graduate program. And I was also had just found out that I was pregnant with my first son. And I was oh. still in grad school. And start, it was a brand new library. And I was going from middle school to elementary, which was completely huge jump. It is yeah. doable, but you've got to, like Laura said, ask a lot of questions. And a lot of times for me, it was, I didn't know what to ask or who to ask it to. Like, I just didn't know. And you just have to go with it. When you learn, you learn and you just ask That's until you, it, yeah, you, you just, you're going to have to just learn how to be really resilient and roll with it and just know that you don't know everything and don't be afraid to say you don't know everything, but you'll find out. Yeah. Colleen, did you have a comment? I was just going to say up here in Canada, it's different. Like we don't need a library um, degree of any sort. So like I have my teaching degree and then we have what we call additional qualifications. So I've taken two additional qualifications that would be equivalent to like maybe half of a college course, maybe, well, maybe a full college course. So it's like two university credits, um, but it's by no means a full degree or it does not cover everything. And every school has a different system. So it's not teaching you the systems really. Um, so yeah. yeah, like Laura said, ask, ask, ask. Like I asked so many questions this year. I still will have more questions next year because they were not all answered. 
And, and you use that, I'm a first year librarian. That is the best excuse and the most valid, like it's a valid excuse, but it's a, yes. I don't know yet. I'm sorry if someone asks you a question, say, you know what, give me a moment. I'm gonna go find out for you. I'll come back to you when I have an answer. Um, but yeah, just do your best and ask those questions. And, and uh, someone's asking a question about having uh, connections with other people or colleagues. Yeah, I do that with friends who aren't librarians. You just like teachers, right? You're you're always connecting and collaborating, and as and that's the best way to grow your your experience. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the whole purpose for this, guys. We've we've been there, and we know you feel a little bit maybe panic stricken or at the very least overwhelmed. And I'm retired. Laura's retired. I mean, we're retired, right, Laura? Um, yeah, we volunteer and do all kinds of things in schools. But I do have a little time if you needed a quick phone call or if you needed to email back and forth and me to help troubleshoot and do things. And I'm willing to do that because I believe in libraries and I believe in getting books in kids' hands. And I know everybody else on this panel feels that way too. We, we want to be a resource to you if if we can be helpful you know we're not trying to jump down your throat or anything but you know if you don't have somebody in your district that you can call and say I don't know what to do you know between the five of us we could probably figure it out and we've got other resources right Laura we've got other yeah. people we could call so exactly. yeah if if you need point. us we want you to know you're not all Absolutely. by yourself we'll help Absolutely. yeah yep yeah. All right. Well, I, we wanted to give everyone a chance to tell you about the freebie they're offering. And Julie's going to do the um, drawing for the giveaway after this, but um, we'll try to go yeah, through Laura, everyone. I need one more thing. I'm so sorry. If you will make sure that you just say something in the chat. So when I go back through, I'll know who to send the PD certificates to, because we had more people sign up oh. than are actually here. And that way I can just do a separate email and send you guys that. And then um, I'm going to kind of call the list a little bit for the prizes since you guys were here. And um, okay. we want, we hopefully, you know, would love for one of you to win because there's some really neat prizes in there. Yeah. Yeah. So go ahead. If you haven't said hello yet in the chat, just make sure you do before we sign off. Especially like and if your phone says like, I don't know who 2015 iPhone Ashley is. And I was like, oh, we had like three Ashleys. So give me some heads up. Great. Great. Thanks, Amy. Okay. Let's go to Lee. Lee, could you tell us about the freebie you're offering and uh, what you have in the giveaway? Sure. So um, the freebie I'm offering is I talked about book challenges. It's something I'm really passionate about. I don't want you just having that, you know, mouth open moment where you don't know what to say uh, when someone comes in with a challenge. So what I've got for you is a um, I, I did not write these for a particular district. They're very generic and you can edit them, but they are selection uh, and they're actually reconsideration policies. So they are. Um, descriptive, but you can go in and edit them as you need to. The whole document's edible. My copy, copyright isn't on it. You can just do whatever you need to do with it. And then there's also a, um, I think it's three pages of form for the parents. So I was saying you have that to uh, staple together and like give that to the parent that's in there. So I want you to make sure you have, pol don't have policies before you go rewrite it and do all that. You need to make sure you, because you have to go by whatever your board uh, policies are, but I know uh, I was in international, two international schools in China, and one of them had nothing. So um, if you're in, especially if you're in an international school, it's really common to have nothing um, as far as the, the selection policies. So you could just go straight from what I had, but if you're in the U.S., you probably do have something, um, but they maybe need to be updated, so you can use that as well for that. And then for the product giveaway, I have a um, library handbook and I have a secondary version and an elementary version. So if you win, um, you need to let me know if you're secondary or elementary, they're almost the same. There's just some small differences, but I have been both elementary and secondary all the way up to tw grade 12. Um, so it's, the handbook is a communication device for teachers. You would put it like comb bind it on the side. Um, and then uh, it's got things like um, just like 
this selection information and it's got your library schedule and you can put how to check out books and what your how many books students can check out and just commonly ask questions there's a place for teachers to write in their passwords you get that all the time you can go in and put in your database information um, whatever you'd like to do. And then I'm also offering a $25 Amazon gift card. Great. Thank you, for that. Thank that you so nice. much. So nice. Wonderful. All right, Renee, why don't you tell us about your freebie and your giveaway? Sure. Um, I know a big part of the beginning of the year for me is always talking about fiction and nonfiction. So I have a scoot game for you to use with um, a variety of age levels. The sheets are differentiated. There are actual book covers. Um, that's why it's free. And um, just to get the kids out of their seats, moving around, trying to decide between which book is fiction and which is nonfiction and discussing those characteristics of each. Great. And um, my paid uh, gift is a a large Dewey Decimal System poster that comes with a bonus poster of all the different sports broken up. Um, so Pretty. it's nice to just print and laminate, connect and laminate them all together to make a nice big poster. Wonderful. Thank you, Renee. Very great. Colleen, what do you have? Yeah, so uh, my freebie giveaway is uh, it's elementary gear. So uh, it is a search and find around the library, um, the letters of the alphabet. Um, so there's uppercase and lowercase. Uh, you pick and choose what you want to put up. And then there's different recording sheets. So I use this with my kindergarten and grade one kids um, for an actual program. But then like I find when um, other classes come in, they'll see all the letters spaced out around and hidden around the library. And they want to find the A and the B and the C. And so it's uh, really cute. Um, and then my paid resource that someone might win is a bulletin board uh, for the popular game of Wordle. Uh, so it's the school edition. I have uh, seven or eight uh, Wordle bulletin boards, but this is the school edition one. Uh, so it's pretty fun. Uh, and you can check that out at my TPT as well. Great. Thank you, Colleen. Um, uh, someone's asking, how do we get the giveaways? Make sure you download the handout in the group and there's a link to each freebie. And then you signed up for this on the raffle copter. So um, you are entered to win each prize that you signed up for. Um, so thanks for asking. Um, okay, Julie, why don't you tell us what you have? <laughs> Um, well, I told you about my paid product. That was the library help desk. If you're interested in that, someone asked this week if I was going to put that in a microwave, microwave, Ooh, micro soft form. I am working on that. It is not ready. It's just in Google form right now, but you could certainly type those and make it your own if you're in a hurry for that. My freebie is also just for elementary through secondary. It's just cat tags. Um, cat tags are nice to have a stack by your OPAC. So when kids are looking up a book, they can jot down the call number, the author's last name, and part of the title of the book, take it to the shelf, and they don't forget what they want. Because by the time they circle back around and want the computer again, somebody else is on it. So just, just an easy little freebie. And I think there's some bookmarks in there as well. Um, my freebie giveaways, I am going to um, be giving away a couple of librarian t-shirts. So if if I email you and tell you that you've won, I'm going to be really nosy and I'm going to ask what color you want and do you want a man's cut or a woman's cut or do you want um, what size, all of those kinds of questions and your address so I can mail it to you. I'll mail it to your school or I'll mail it to your home, whatever you're the most comfortable with. Great, great. All right, and I've got uh, my, my freebie is a Be Yourself bulletin board that I love to print on bright paper. It's easy to cut with a paper cutter. And I think it's um, attention grabbing and will kind of lift up your entire school community. Um, and then for my giveaway resource, I've got a Back to the Books bulletin board that's interactive, um, also low prep, but gets your staff and students talking about and recommending good books to one another. Um, 
And then I've got a Be the Light t-shirt to give away also. And um, I got it from Missy Lulu's Custom. So I've got two color choices you can have, but I have those here uh, with me. And also a copy of After the Fall. It's a picture book, but um, I've had my dad read it, my husband read it. If you've read it, you know that um, it gives people of all ages something to think about. So, um, all right. And that's it, I think. Are yes. we?